Monoidal categories and their representations. Lecture 13. Module categories via categories of comodules. Let us describe the idea of the content of this lecture. Let C be a monoidal category and let M be a left module category over C. Let us fix two objects X and Y in M. Then we have the functor F from C to sets given as follows. We take an object F in C and we map it to the morphism set in M from the object F acted upon X to the object Y. Idea, under some assumptions on C, the functor F is representable. Let us say by some object, which we denote by X comma Y in brackets. This gives the following adjunction that is a natural isomorphism between the morphism set in M from the object F acting on X to the object Y and the morphism set in C from the object F to the object the bracket of X and Y. Furthermore, for nice C, it turns out that the object X, X in bracket has a natural structure of an algebra object. And then one will be able to recover the original module category M as the category of modules over this algebra object. So this is the general idea of this lecture. So let us go into details. We start with the definition of the notion of an internal whole. Let K be an algebraically closed field and assume that our category C is finitary abelian over K. In other words, this category is equivalent to the category of modules over some finite dimensional associative K algebra. Let M be a finitary abelian module category over C. Assume that the category C is rigid. In particular, each object has both left and right adjoint. Then each object of the category C acts on the category M as an exact functor. Therefore, the functor which sends F to the morphism set in M from F acting on X to Y this functor is left exact and hence representable. Definition, the representing object, which we denote by x, y in bracket in C, is called the internal home from x to y. Remark, the representing object is defined uniquely up to isomorphism because from the Aneda lemma, we see that two non-isomorphic objects represent non-isomorphic functors. Also, from the Aneda lemma, it follows that the assignment, which takes the pair x, y and sends it to the internal home from x to y, is a bifunctor from m op times m to c. In other words, it is contravariant in the first argument and it is covariant in the second argument. And it is straightforward to check that this bifunctor is left exact in each variable. So here is a small example. Let us take as a module M the left regular C module. So M is equal to C. The action is equal to the tensor product on the left. C acts on the left on itself via tensor product. The associativity for the action is given by the associator alpha and the left unitor is just lambda. Let us choose as X the identity object I in C and let y be any. Then composition with the right unitor evaluated at f gives the natural isomorphism between the home set in C from f tensor i to y and the home set in C from f to y. So this means exactly that the internal home from the identity object to any y is equal to or is isomorphic to y. Let us now discuss some canonical isomorphisms. Lemma, there exist the following canonical isomorphisms. First of all, an isomorphism from the morphism set in M from X to F acting on Y to the morphism set in C from the identity to F 
tensor the internal home between x and y. Second, the internal home from x to g acting on y is isomorphic to g tensor with the internal home of x and y. And finally, the internal home from g acting on x to y is isomorphic to the internal home between x and y tensored with g dual. Proof? We proved the second isomorphism and the rest is an exercise. For any object f in C, we compute using definitions and injunctions. The home set in C from f to the internal home from x to g acting on y is isomorphic by definition to the home set in M from f acting on x to g acting on y. We take the dual of g and we go to the home set in M from g dual acting on f acting on x and then we take the home set to y. Now we use the associator to rearrange the bracket in the first argument and now we have the home set in M from g dual tensor f this acts on x and we take home into y. Now we again use the definition of internal home to get that this is isomorphic to the home set in C from G dual tensor F to the internal home from x to y. And now we move G to the right, taking the dual, and we obtain the home set in C from F to G tensor with the internal home from x to y. And since this is true for any F in C, the claim follows from the Yoneda lemma. So we get that the internal home from X to G acting on Y is isomorphic to G tensor with the internal home from X to Y. And the two other isomorphisms are proved similarly. Now let us relate our module category M to the left regular C module. Let us fix an object X in M and consider the assignment f sub x, which sends y to the internal home from x to y. Directly from the definition, this is a functor from M to C. And by the previous lemma, we have a canonical isomorphism from the value of this functor at g acting on y to g tensor with the value of this functor at y. Now it is very easy to check that this defines on this functor the structure of a C module functors. In other words, we have a homomorphism of C modules from M to the left regular C module. And this is of course a major step towards our goal. We now have a way to connect an arbitrary abstract C module category to the left regular C module. So in some sense, this shows that the left regular C module is the most universal of all C module categories. Next, let us define evaluation and multiplication. So we have a canonical isomorphism given by our adjunction from the definition of the internal home. So the home space in C from the internal home from X to Y to itself is isomorphic to the home space in M from the internal home from x to y acting on x to y. So we can take the identity in the left-hand side and move it to the right-hand side. So the image of the identity in the left-hand side, the image of this on the right-hand side is called the evaluation map. So it's a morphism in M from the image of x under the action of the internal home x comma y to y. And we can superpose this, of course. If x, y, and z are objects in M, then we have the composition. We can start from x, act on it by the tensor product of the internal home from y to z with the internal home from x to y. We can use mu to rearrange the bracket. And now we have x. We act on it by the internal home from x to y. And then we act on the outcome by the internal home from y to z. So if you take identity on the leftmost factor and the evaluation on the factor in brackets, we go to the internal home from y to z acting on y. 
And now we evaluate from y to z and we end in, the, in z. And from the definition of the internal home, if we take the internal home definition adjunction, we see that this morphism defines a morphism which we denote by gamma from the tensor product of the internal homes from y to z and from x to y to the internal home from x to z in C. This is our multiplication map. Now let's talk about the unit. For an object x in M, we have the obvious canonical isomorphism from the home set in M from x to x to the home set in M from the identity acting on x to x. So this sends the identity on x to the left unitor L of our action. And we also have the canonical isomorphism from the home set in M from the identity acting on x to x to the home set in C from the identity to the internal home from x to x. So we denote by y in the right hand side the image of the map L from the left hand side. So this is our unitor. And our main theorem is that the triple, which consists of the internal home from x to x, the multiplication gamma, and the unitor y is an algebra object in the monoidal category C. For this, we need to prove that gamma is associative and that y is unital. So let's prove unitality. Let's start with the right unitality of y. So we need to prove that the following diagram commutes. We start from our algebra object tensor the identity. We can do rho, we go to the algebra object. Alternatively, we can do the unit map in the second argument to go to the tensor product of our algebra object with itself. And then using the multiplication, we go to our algebra object. So we want to prove that this commutes. So we start with the following diagram. We go back via the junction and look at the following diagram. So we take the ingredients of this diagram and act by them on the object X in M. So we have the object X on which we act by the tensor product of the algebra object with the unit. We can use mu to go to the X on which we act by the identity and then by the algebra object. We can act on X by the algebra object and connect them via the unitor map for the action. Alternatively, here we can use the map rho, the right unitor in C, to go from this to x, acting on it by the algebra object, and then we can use evaluation to contract to x. So the triangle here, so in fact, uh, this is a quadrangle, so this quadrangle commutes by the unitality axiom for our C module category M. So this diagram commutes. And now, under the junction from the definition of the algebra object, the evaluation map is sent to the identity on the algebra object. In other words, so this evaluation map corresponds to this identity map. And now here we have rho acting on the identity, and here we have rho. So this way in the upper diagram corresponds to this pass in the lower diagram. So the east and south pass in the commutative diagram corresponds to rho. And the other pass, south and east pass to the diagram, corresponds to the composition of gamma after identity tensor y. So indeed, so the composition gamma is given by the evaluation map. And the map y was defined here as the image of L under the junction, and here we have our L. So this means that this path corresponds to this map in this diagram. So since this diagram commutes, after applying a junction, we get that this diagram also commutes, which proves the unitality of our diagram. To prove the unitality on the other side is an exercise. So let's discuss associativity. To prove associativity of gamma, consider the following diagram. So we take the object X in M and act on it 
by the tensor product of the internal homes from Z to U, from Y to Z, and from X to Y. And now we can, of course, use the associators, both in C and in M, to rearrange the brackets in all possible ways, which we do. And we get here this pentagon diagram for the associators. And then when we have rearranged the brackets in all possible ways, we can start evaluating. And then we have the diagram for the evaluators. And of course, the pentagon diagram here, which is a triangle here, this is commutes by the pentagon diagram. Now we have a quadrangle here, which is just the naturality of mu. So this quadrangle commutes by the naturality of mu because we rearrange the brackets in different ways and then we evaluate. So we have such a complicated commutative diagram. And now if we take this commutative diagram and use the definition of the internal home, so we have to do a junction under the junction coming from the definition of the internal home, the two paths in the above commutative diagram give the two paths in the commutative diagram, which describes the associativity of the multiplication gamma. This establishes the associativity of gamma and completes our proof. So indeed, the internal home from any object to itself is an algebra object in the monoidal category C. Another consequence of exactly the same argument is that for any object Y in M, the internal home from X to Y is in fact a right module over the algebra object given by the internal home from X to X. The proof is exactly the same. It follows from exactly the same computation as above. Further, directly from the definitions, it also follows that the functor of taking the internal home starting at x. So this is a functor which starts from m and goes to the left regular representation of c. In fact, this functor takes a morphism in m and sends it to a homomorphism of modules over our algebra objects. So it is not only a functor from m to c, but really it takes values in the category of all right modules over our algebra object given by the internal home from x to x. So for example, again, let's take as a module M the left regular C module, and let's take as x the identity object. So we already seen that the internal home from the identity to the identity is the identity object, and the junction from the home set in C from identity tensor identity to identity, which is isomorphic to the home set from identity to identity. So this maps the left unitor for the identity, which is equal to the right unitor for the identity, which is equal to our map iota. This sends it to the identity morphism on the identity object. In other words, this implies that our composition map gamma is equal to the iota and that the, our unit map epsilon is equal to the identity on i. So we have the algebra object given by the identity, our map iota, and the identity morphism on i. It's a nice exercise to explain the associativity of iota directly from the axioms of the monoidal category. So now we can formulate the main theorem for today's lecture. It's a theorem which is due to Victor Ostrich from 2003, and I formulate it in a slightly less general setup. For simplicity, the more general setup will be described after the formulation. Assume that C is rigid and is finitary abelian over K. Assume that M is finitary abelian over K. So this is the description of the previous setup. Let's take as an object X a projective generator of M. Then the functor of taking the internal home from X to somewhere. So this is a functor from M to the category of right modules over the algebra object, the internal home from X to X. And this is a category of right modules over this algebra object in C. This functor is an equivalence of C module categories.
indeed, one can weaken the requirement. So we can delete the requirement that X is a projective generator of M. What we really need is that the functor of taking the internal home from X is exact. And that for any M in the category M, there is an object F in C such that there is an epimorphism to M from the outcome of F acting on X. So in this sense, X generates the whole category M under the action of C. And this theorem is taken from Ostrich's paper from 2003, which is called Module Categories, Weakhoff Algebras and Modular Invariants. So first, let us start with our assumptions that X is a projective generator and prove that the functor of taking the internal home from X is exact. So since X is projective in M and C is rigid, if we apply to X any element in C, we get a projective object because the functor of applying element F in C is left adjoint to applying the dual element. And so in particular, it's left adjoint to an exact functor because application of the dual element has both adjoints. So it's an exact functor. And so the functor of application of F sends projectives to projectives. So X acted upon by F is a projective object. Next, for any object Y in M, we have by definition the junction that the home set from F acting on X to Y is isomorphic to the home set in C from F to the internal home from X to Y. The left-hand side is exact because the image of X under F is projective. So the left-hand side is exact in Y, and so the right-hand side is exact in Y as well. So if we take as F a projective generator of C, then the functor, the external functor of taking home from F to somewhere, it is exact. Moreover, it is exact if and only if the internal functor of taking home from X somewhere is exact. And this implies that the original functor of taking home from X to somewhere is indeed exact. Let us discuss the left adjoint of the forgetful functor from modules over our algebra object to C. So let D denote the category of all right modules over our algebra object given by the internal home from X to X. Then the claim is that the following lemma describes the left adjoint to the forgetful functor from D to C. Lemma, for any Y in M and for any F in C, there is a natural isomorphism from the home set in D from F tensor with the algebra object X comma X in bracket to the internal home X comma Y in bracket. So this is isomorphic to the home in C from F to the internal home from X to Y. Proof. Let us define a map from the left-hand side to the right-hand side by sending a morphism F from the left-hand side to the following composition. So we start with F. We do the inverse of the right unitor to go to F tensor I. Now we do epsilon in the second component to go to F tensor, the internal home from X to X. And now we can apply F, little f, to go to the internal home from X to Y. This defines a map from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Next, define a map in the opposite direction by sending G from X to the internal home from X to Y to the following map. So we start with F tensor, our algebra object. We apply G in the first component and the identity in the second component to go to the internal home from X to Y, tensor the internal home from X to X. And now we multiply to go to the internal home from X to Y. So this defines a map from the right-hand side to the left-hand side. And it is very easy to check that they are each other's inverses. Our next step is that we prove that our functor of taking the internal home from X to somewhere is full and faithful on the following object. So if you take the first object of the form F acting on X, F is somewhere in C, X is our fixed object. And the second object is an arbitrary Y in M. 
we need to prove that our functor defines an isomorphism between the set of all morphisms in M from F acting on X to Y and the set of all morphisms in D from the internal home from X to F acting on X to the internal home from X to Y. Indeed, we do the following computation. We take the right-hand side and we use our canonical isomorphism to move F out in the first argument. So we have home set in D from F tensor internal home from X to X, and then the home taken to the internal home from X to Y. Now we see is that this is a home set in D from F tensor with the algebra object. So from the previous lemma, we can delete the algebra object and go to the home set in C. So this is isomorphic to the home set in C from F to the internal home from X to Y. And now by the definition, we can now move X to the left using the adjunction. This is isomorphic to the home set in F from F acting on X to Y. And this establishes the claim. So we have proved that our functor is full and faithful on certain objects. Now we prove that it is full and faithful on any objects. So we just proved that it is full and faithful on all objects of the form F acting on X and X was a projective generator, so it's full and faithful on all projective objects. Now take any pair Y and Z of objects in M and choose a projective presentation for Y. So Y is covered by P0 and P1 covers the kernel. Then we can apply the exact functor F and we get a projective presentation for the object F acting on Y. And now we can apply the left exact functor of home into Z, and we get a left exact sequence, zero goes to the home set in M from F acting on Y to Z, and then this goes to the home set in M from F acting on P0 to Z, and so on. And now if you look at the commutative diagram, when we have this sequence at the first row, and the corresponding sequence in D obtained by applying our functor of taking the internal home from X as the second row. So our functor is exact, so these two sequences are left exact, and then we have the vertical sequences given by the application of our functor, so we have a commutative diagram. And now we see that the middle vertical arrow and the right vertical arrow, they are isomorphisms by the previous step. And so by the five lemma, it means that the middle arrow is an isomorphism, and we are done. So we have proved that our functor is full and faithful. In order to prove that it is an equivalence, it remains to show that our functor is dense. In other words, it's essentially surjective. So let M be an object in D. The image of the identity of M under the adjunction, which sends um, the home set from M to M to the home set in D from M tensor the algebra object given by the internal home from X to X to M. So the image of the identity on M under this adjunction is a projective cover of M. So this is exactly the free object on M. This is how projective covers are constructed. So in other words, this is a projective cover of M in D and so it's an epimorphism. In other words, the object M is a quotient of the object M tensored with our algebra object, the internal home from X to X. So let the kernel be N, but then the kernel N is a quotient of uh, N tensoring with the algebra object. So both M tensored with the algebra object and N tensored with the algebra object, they are in the image of our internal home functor up to isomorphism, because we saw this, and the internal home functor is exact, full, and faithful. Consequently, the object M is in the image of this functor up to isomorphism as well. And this completes the proof of the main theorem. Again, we finish with a small example. Consider the same module category given by the left regular C module and take the object X to be the identity object. We know already that the internal home from the identity to itself is the identity, that the multiplication is given by a yota and the unit is just the 
identity morphism on the identity object. And we already seen that the functor of taking the internal home from the identity, it maps any object to the same object, to itself. And it is very easy to check that it also maps any morphism to the same morphism to itself. Therefore, in this particular case, the equivalence given by the main theorem is just the identity and the functor on C. Please note that in this case, the object I is not usually projective, but indeed the, taking the internal home from this object is an exact functor for the obvious reasons. And of course, for any object M in our category, we can start from the identity, act by some F, and we have an object which surjects onto M. Actually, we can take F to be equal to M, and this surjection will be an isomorphism. So this shows that the weaker conditions are important for some applications. Okay, some problems and questions at the end. Question one show that the bifunctor, which starts from the pair x comma y and goes to the internal home from x to y, is left exact in each variable. Question two proves all details the two other canonical isomorphisms for internal homes. We had a lemma with three isomorphisms. We prove one of them, prove the two others. Question three, check with all details that the functor of taking the internal home from x to somewhere is a c-module functor. Question four, prove the second unitality axiom for epsilon. And question five, do the checking in the lemma about the left adjoint of the forgetful functor from d to C. Thank you very much and see you next time.